Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dave with Alaskan Homesteading. I have a workbench video for you today. I am going to try to repair my diesel air heater that I've been using in the greenhouse to help extend my growing season, or really to help extend it earlier. Uh, I had to heat the greenhouse in the spring last year because it was really just uh, too cold, uh, a little too late, and we really needed to get the plants outside. So I installed a diesel heater. The problem I've been having is that it hasn't been operating correctly. Uh, I believe I know the reason why, because I've done a little bit of research about it, and today I think I can take it apart, do the repairs that need to be done, put it back together, and test fire it. Let's go ahead and take a look at what problem we're having with this diesel heater. So I'm going to demonstrate the problem that I've been having, and hopefully it'll reproduce the problem. Um, but basically, this thing has been having a hard start, and the symptom that I get is white smoke coming out through the uh, exhaust. Uh, it hasn't finished its ignition sequence yet, so we're not getting any smoke here, but uh, we'll give it a few seconds and see what happens. So you can start to see some of this smoke coming out of the exhaust as it tries to start up. Let's see if this actually finishes the ignition sequence. Well, the pump has started feeding in more fuel. The fan has sped up. And still getting some smoke. It's not the thick white smoke that I had been getting previously. So maybe this thing is working better than I thought. I don't know if I had a fuel problem or if the combustion chamber was dirty or what, but this is already looking a bit more promising. Oh, there we go. Now that's the, the much thicker smoke that I was getting. Like that. Doesn't look very good. It smells terrible. It's just unburned diesel vapor. And once again, it has failed to ignite. And now it's going to run its fan to clean out any excess fuel in the combustion chamber. Well, I'd say the only thing for it is going to be to disassemble it and see what is going on inside. I have disassembled the heater unit from the stand out in the greenhouse so that I can start taking it apart to uh, clean the insides. It's pretty clear that if you look down here at the exhaust, this thing is just full of soot. And I bet when I get into that combustion chamber inside, I'm going to find more of the same. So let's go ahead and start taking this down into its pieces. This end will grill unscrews and the top just sort of flips away. You can take that out of the way. And now we need some tools to, to do a little bit further disassembly. First thing we have to do is take off this little control board. It has an Allen. This control board is essentially just the brains of this device. And it connects to a couple of sensors and the glow plug. So we'll disconnect that temperature sensor and the glow plug wiring. Put that aside. And I'm just going to take this fastener and put it back in its home here so that it can't get lost in the shuffle. On the other side of this, we need to take off the intake and exhaust plate. Simple enough. And there is a rubber gasket behind this that's gotten pretty warm, so I think it might have adhered a bit. Have to remove this gasket to be able to pull the actual burner and heat exchanger 
out of this housing. Let's turn this back over. And now this whole unit slides out of the housing. But I need, oops, I need to disconnect that one more wire. There we go. All right, so we'll get these extra parts out of the way and keep our little workstation clear. The next stage is going to be undoing these four fasteners. And this is using a four millimeter Allen. And I should note, I've never taken one of these apart before. It's a pretty simple device. I have looked at a couple of other people's videos. Um, there's a ton of videos about these cheap Chinese diesel heaters online. This one happens to be a Vivor model um, that I bought through Home Depot. Uh, it was actually one of the only ways to get one of these shipped here. When you go on Amazon and look at these units here in Alaska, nobody wants to ship you a diesel heater for some reason. Uh, but I was able to get it through Home Depot shipped to my house, free shipping. So sometimes you just have to look around and try different places. Alright, let's see if this wants to come apart or if it needs any persuasion. Very easy. Perfect. That came right off. No problem at all. And then when we look at this, you can see the back side of the combustion chamber. And again, we'll have to disassemble that. And then to be able to remove this, we will have to take off the glow plug. I'll need a little wrench for that. Well, that is a 12 millimeter. There's not a lot of space to turn this in here, but that's coming out quite easily. Just remove this dust boot gently. And then we can quite easily spin that out. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of gunk on there that I'll have to clean off, but not terrible. And there's one grommet on the side here that holds the fuel line a bit. As we remove this, there we go, no problem. And this is the combustion unit, which I'll have to get some light in there. That's not too bad, you can see that. But it looks a little dirty, could be a little wet from the recent ignition attempts. You see the back of this though is very sooty, so that we're gonna have to clean off. And then looking inside the actual combustion chamber, we can see tons of soot in there as well. That does not look good at all. Yeah, you can see lots of soot in there and debris in the bottom. That needs a good cleaning. Let's go ahead and start getting this cleaned up. These little metal pans I uh, absolutely love. I get them actually at Walmart. They're in the pet section, and I think they're intended as like a watering dish or something, but uh, I don't know, like five or six bucks for a pretty good, you know, sturdy metal pan that I, I find to be just great for parts cleaning. And I'm just using some brake clean. It's a good 
cleaner for messes like this. It really broke up that carbon just like nothing, which is awesome. The other nice thing about brake clean is it leaves behind really no residue. It's also non-flammable, which depending on your working environment may or may not matter. In my case, I don't think it really matters. I don't have any ignition sources in here to be concerned about, but I do I do like using that cleaner. It's really inside here as well. This is the fuel intake, and I believe there's a little, yeah, there's a little screen in there that I need to clean up. And if you look closely, let me grab a, a little tool here. This part is where the glow plug goes in. The fuel is delivered in through here, and a little bit of air is delivered as well. One of the problems that happens on these is that this little air intake gets clogged up, and I think that's part of the problem. You can see quite a bit of soot right there, and that is preventing ignition. So I'm just going to clean that out with this little pick. These are great little things to have around the workbench. Reach in there, clean out some of that other debris. And we want to pull this screen that's in here as well, if we can, without damaging it. That is part of how the ignition system works. There's a little screen in there that gets heated by the glow plug and the fuel is drawn across the heated screen, which helps it ignite. I think I'm gonna have to spray some cleaner in there. Break up that carbon. You may be able to see inside there just where this little different color material is. That's the screen, but I'm having a difficult time getting it to move. I think it is fully encrusted in this carbon buildup. All right, that's starting to look a little better, although yeah, I'm already, looks like I may already be damaging that screen. I see some little wires fraying off of the edge of it, which that's not so good. I really want to get that out of there so I can clean it properly. I did order a rebuild kit for this, and I'm not sure if the one I ordered actually includes the screen. It might. It's, it comes with a new glow plug and gaskets and... Um, I think the uh, the screen, um, oh, and a, a wrench for the glow plug. But obviously I didn't really need that. I'm gonna spray that down some more and uh, let that sit and come back to it. And now we've got this thing. Oof, gnarly. That's a lot of debris in there. All right, let's spray the inside of this. Oh, that's working very nicely. I love that. Most of the other people that I've seen taking these apart really just used a mechanical cleaning process. They just scraped away at the soot, but I like this chemical process. That's cleaning up pretty nicely. So I'll probably use an entire $7 can of brake clean on this process, but I'll have a good clean combustion chamber when all is said and done. Try to clean up this mating surface, which is just that's a little bit of gasket adhesive, maybe. We're going back after this screen again. 
on the intake, uh, on the fuel intake here to see if I can get that out. And I got the little air orifice cleaned, so that's okay. But I want to make sure that the screen itself isn't all full of junk blocking the uh, flow of air. Yeah, this thing must have been really coked up inside. Oh yeah, big chunks. Look at that. Wow. I mean, this had, it's almost like a centimeter across and uh, probably four, four or five millimeters thick chunk of soot just jammed inside that air intake. Now, some of the problems I'm having with this are absolutely 100% my own fault. I experimented with um, using vegetable oil to fire this thing, and uh, that really, that was the thing that I think triggered all these problems. I didn't do straight vegetable oil. Um, I did mix it in with the diesel, but... Um, Evidently, it just uh, will not burn adequately in this system. So I won't be doing that again. And I would definitely suggest anybody else who has these not try vegetable oil. Now, if I get interested in more experiments with this, maybe I'll try and mix up a little micro batch of biodiesel and see if I can try that in here. But... I am not going to mess with vegetable oil again. Let's see. GoPro stop. See? Non flammable. That's nice in this kind of environment where I might have to use heat on something. Of course the vapors from it probably aren't aren't too wonderful to uh, breathe in so definitely would recommend being careful if you do mess around with this stuff inside. Yeah. Door. Still cannot get that screen to budge. And I know it's a replaceable item. I'll try a little bit of the blaster here. This uh, penetrating oil. I'll admit this is a little bit of a Hail Mary, but we'll see. We'll see what it does. I'm going to try a little thin screwdriver and try to wedge it in between the screen and the chamber that it's in. Let's see if I can use that to work it loose. Let's try some uh, little forceps here. See if we can get a grip on an edge of that. No success doing nothing. One bit. At some point, I have to just rip that out of there and hope I can get a good piece apart. Because I'm going to get that is super plugged up. Hmm. Boy, that's frustrating.
That's neat. That looks sort of like that diesel uh, smoke that I was getting out of the system. So I think I might be finding some more debris on the inside of this screen as I work it with these forceps. And got some more chunk chunks of carbon to come off. So we some in here. Getting a piece broken up. It's got to the inside of this chamber. I can't really tell. I can see inside very well. I don't know if one can use the inside of this casting or a piece of carbon for us to get inside there. I see that swing is starting to wiggle a bit in there. And that's all I found. There we go. Starting to move it in and out. Just, aha! There we go. Finally. Gosh. That thing was stubborn. It's hard to tell whether that's really gunked up. Looking at it under the light here, I don't think it really is. It doesn't look that bad. I'm going to cut off these little fragments of wire screen, though. Looks like I don't want those hanging out there. Let's break off the ones we off. Let's see, again, spread out some brick clean. Yeah, I it's kind of there, brick clean, so I think this squeeze is actually okay. What this does do is now we can look inside. I feel it. See if I can see any more three in there, which it sure looks like there is. Hard to tell, but you can see it on camera, I'm not sure. But you can see it or not, I can. And we'll go back to the XMR. See if I can free up any more of that. Coke up the inside. I really need like a metal pipe cleaner. A little brass, brass brush would fit in there. That would be perfect. I don't have such a thing. Already. Well, already that looks a lot better, just with spraying it a bit. Yeah, good. We're still getting more debris out of there. That's great. That's good news. This really needed a thorough cleaning. That's what I'm that's what I'm learning from this. It was just super full of debris and carbon. And there was really no chance that it was going to work correctly, again, without a significant cleaning. One note on reassembly, you want to make sure that when you put this screen back in, it doesn't occlude this little air inlet hole, otherwise you will not get good combustion. That has to be tucked in all the way down into there. So you'll see that. That's nice and nice and clear in there. There's nothing inside there. Good way to confirm, you know, you can run your your pick through that. Well, it is time for me to reassemble this so that I can at least try and get a test fire going. So we'll just reverse the process. And I do not have any torque specifications for any of these fasteners, so I am going to use the standard German specification. They will be good and tight. For threading these back in, I'm going to use my hand tool here. Removing them, I didn't feel like I needed to worry about it too much, but for reinstallation, I don't want to cross thread these things. Now that I've got these in here good and tight, I'm going to give them a little. Ready, Andy, the S comes ahead. 
That's all looking good. And now we can reinstall. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, I screwed myself. I should have left this off. I forgot my disassembly sequence and uh, put the cart before the horse. No matter. There is a nice little socket for these that comes with the rebuild kits, but I'll be waiting a few days before I can get that. And because I am an impatient man child, I am not going to wait for that to test fire my, uh, my heater. Reassembly is just the reverse of disassembly. All right, there we have it. It is reassembled and hopefully ready to uh, test fire. All right, we're back in the greenhouse and it's now time to reassemble this into the stand that I built for it. Hopefully now this will be the moment of truth. If I have made this repair correctly, I should be able to turn this on and have it start and uh, make heat. The first thing it does is it turns on the glow plug and the fan at a low speed and it starts to preheat to get ready for the fuel to come in. I can, you can just hear the fan starting to turn up a little bit. And that is the fuel pump, which has now started to feed fuel into the system. And if we look outside, once again, we will see that white smoke. I sure hope this thing manages to get full ignition this time. Well, it made a good sound just then that sounded like ignition. There's kind of a pop. And now if we listen at the air intake, you'll hear that characteristic sound of the diesel heater burning. That low rumble. Unfortunately, that sound has stopped. I don't know if this thing's going to complete ignition. goes again. You can hear it rumbling. The exhaust smoke has cleared up quite a bit. See the smoke has definitely cleared up some. Folks, I do believe we have proper ignition at this time. The heater has definitely started to make its normal sounds. So I'm switching over to different camera so we can look at this screen a little bit better. Can't really pick it up with the GoPro. But you can really hear now, it's subtle, but you can hear that the fuel pump has increased in speed. And you should still be able to hear that characteristic rumble from the ignition process. 
still seeing some smoke out there, but not as much. It's kicking out little bits of soot, so we're definitely finishing the cleaning of that combustion chamber by getting full ignition. And that's one of the things that I've heard is really important with these units, is to make sure to get it going good and hot. Don't let it run at a low level because that's one of the things that will encourage soot buildup, which leads to a vicious cycle of the soot building up, preventing proper combustion, which makes more soot buildup, which prevents proper combustion, and so on and so forth, until the whole system just stops working. We can watch the fuel pump down here pulsing, so that's working, and picking up speed. set for 11C as the set point, but I don't think that's really going to do anything for us. I forget how I got it into this mode. Oh, there we go. 71C is telling us the, the temperature of the combustion uh, chamber itself, I believe. There we go. This is the normal mode. I like to use it on this power mode. So power mode five is a pretty good heat level that it'll put off. And we'll see if it'll keep running. The other problem I have with this heater is that periodically it will shut itself down because it stops sensing the fan spinning. And it does that to protect itself Now we seem to be burning pretty well. We've got it up to power level seven and it's still running well. Bring it up to eight. It's always at these higher levels that I've had the biggest problem with it failing to detect the fan and shutting itself down. So it's a little risky, I feel, setting it to that high level right now. Still getting a little bit of smoke out here, but not that much. It really has cleared up. I want to get this thing really rip roaring hot. It's running well, do I dare? Take it to level eight. Let's try level nine. That thing is really cooking. Pumps clicking away. We've got nice warm air coming out our vent over here. I can thaw my hands. It is still pretty chilly in here. Level 10. Well, it doesn't go to 11. Well, at this point, I feel quite good about this repair. We are operating at level 10 and have been for a few minutes here. The combustion chamber is up to 185 degrees C, which is really nice. I think that's actually not the combustion chamber necessarily, but the uh, maybe the air exchanger temperature. It's really hard to tell. The air coming out certainly is not any 185 degrees Celsius. Uh, it is nice and warm, and we have raised the temperature in this greenhouse by a couple of degrees Celsius just by working this thing for a few minutes. So that's going quite well. At this point though, I am going to uh, go ahead and bring it down to a lower level and uh, set it through its shutdown. Get down to level one there. And you hear the fuel pump slow down and that's really all that level setting is doing is changing the pulse rate of the fuel pump and it does take quite a while for this thing to cool back down and we are shutting down 
And one of the things it does when it shuts down, it goes through this cleaning sequence. You can see that CLEA flashing and the glow plug is igniting again or heating again. And that will help clear the combustion chamber. Okay, folks, well, that's all the time I've got for today. That was a successful repair, and I'm very happy about it. Um, I was a little, you know, concerned that I would have some uh, problems with some of the parts along the way through there, uh, particularly the gaskets. I was worried that they would get wrecked while disassembling it, uh, but that didn't turn out to be an issue. So uh, the gaskets that I ordered in advance of doing this video, I guess I can just keep on hand as spares for the next time that I have to tear this thing apart. But uh, I'm really happy that I was able to clean out that combustion chamber, get all that coked up you know, diesel out of there, and uh, get the thing operating again at a, at a good temperature setting. Anyway, if you are enjoying these workshop videos, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about what I'm doing here. Uh, if you have any questions about these diesel heaters, I will be more than happy to try to answer them for you. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. GoPro, stop recording.